On today's episode of the Post Christian Podcast, I'm on with AJ Diaz, the author of My Beautiful Bellissima, Stories of Love and Healing. How are you doing, Anne Marie? I'm doing great. Thank you, Eric. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing well. And the timing of your book for me and my family has been just perfect in many ways. Uh, we lost our dog and she was 16 years old. It was a very tragic, awful experience, but we're so grateful for our dog and in and, and kind of a really meaningful moment uh, as my kids who are 21 and 24 were holding her in her last moments, I just had this realization that this little dog for 16 years, you know, came into our life and she brought comfort mm -hmm. to my kids. And now they were able to give her comfort in her last moments. Talk about your story of Belisima, why you wrote the book. I'm just eager for people to hear kind of your journey and trying to make a difference in telling your story as a person of faith but also as someone who loves dogs. Go ahead and tell tell us why you wrote this book. Sure, thank you. Well, it's not a very direct path. Um, thank you for sharing some of your life experience as well. You know, our dogs really are, since I grew up, they are a part of my family. Mm -hmm. You know, they very much are family members. I love them very much. They're God's creation. And I believe he, he created them to bless us, to bless our families. And we get to care for his creation in a very personal way through them. So thank you for sharing that. This was not a very straightforward path for me. Um, if I could, I'm going to go back very briefly, actually go back a couple of years before I wrote the book. Um, a few months into COVID, I started struggling with a lot of issues around fear, worry, anxiety, some of which I share in the book. Um, Gateway, our church at the time was doing a push to get people to try out going to restore the recovery ministries. And they were really saying, you know, this is for anything. And they list off the different things it could be for. And they mentioned worry, that fear or worry could be reasons to go and to restore. And they said, if anything, anything that feels like it could be making your life insane would give you a reason to go into restore. And my worries truly were, they were insane. When I could get myself into a logical place, I could examine them and look and see that there was no basis. In most cases, I was just feeling fear and there was no sense in that. It was robbing me of my joy. And so I started going to restore. I ended up doing 12 steps for codependency, which I never again would have never imagined that would have happened. But as I learned more, that's where I ended up. Um, during this process, kind of smack dab in the middle of that 12 step process, we adopted a feral cattle dog, mm -hmm. which of course, right, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? You're dealing with fear and anxiety. So adopt a feral dog. That'll be a great thing to do while you're going through 12 steps. Exactly. But we did it. <laughs> we did it. We love her. She chose us. Shaniko, my husband, I said she chose us. And so we had to bring her home. Mm -hmm. And we did. Um, and so fast forward a couple of years and Gateway decided to change the name of the this umbrella of ministries for restore um, reconciliation, I would say, um, to heal, H-E-A-L. And it struck me the analogy between the word H-E-A-L and the command for our dogs, H-E-E-L. And as you be, may be familiar with, the command heal for our dogs means that they should know where we are. They should be beside us. They should be close. Mm -hmm. They can enjoy their surroundings. They can look around their surroundings, but they should always know where we are and they're following in step with us. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize there's an analogy there, a strong analogy to heal as Christians when we heal H-E-A-L. A lot of it isn't just coming alongside God, knowing where he is, knowing how he's present in our lives and learning how to better follow him. And for me, it was about really learning how to trust him. Mm. And I realized in that process how much as I was trying to work with Bella for her, and I share this in the book, for her to trust me so that I could provide for her and care for her, how much I really had a lot to learn about really trusting God with my life and the lives of those around me. And so, and, and so I wrote this email to Doug and Brian, two of the pastors over the Heal Ministries. And the next time I saw Doug, he stopped. He said, that email was so beautiful. I, I mean, where did that come from? And I was like, well, I, I just wrote it. And I'd written in a business context in the past, but never, I never said I'd write a book. So this was a very spirit-led process. Mm -hmm. And at that point, then I just started jotting down some stories and those little notes into a Google Doc ended up being my beautiful Bellissima. There's a process that I followed, but that basically ended up being this book um, and really a desire to 
um, create something that would be appealing to dog lovers, that would be receptive, receive, well received by dog lovers, regardless as if they knew God or Jesus, mm -hmm. but maybe bring some new ideas about God and Jesus to them and mm -hmm. share some ideas about codependency that maybe other people like myself, I knew so little when I started going to restore and it has meant so much for my life and bringing back my joy in my life. And so I hope I can share that with others. Well, I just love your heart for helping others in the midst of their loss. We have probably more dogs in Austin than people who follow Jesus. You know, we're, <laughs> we're in a very um, dog loving city. Only 13% of Austin goes to church and that might even be lower now post pandemic. But I just love how your heart for people led to the effort it took to write a book and, and what I've been able to read so far, it's really encouraging. It's incredibly meaningful. Talk for a moment for those dog lovers. And I have all sorts of friends and families and neighbors uh, who do not know Jesus, but do love their dog that I think this book could kind of open that conversation. But talk a little bit about some of the things you learned writing the book about God's love for us the dogs that we have in our life and their love for us. Like talk about some of the things you've discovered and, and maybe why God gives us these pets. Sure. Oh, that, that is, that is a really big question actually. <laughs> um, so, you know, I believe all of God's creation around us, I look out the window and I see the trees and, and you, you, I don't know if you know me from my past, but I used to be heavily involved in gateways outdoor ministry. Mm -hmm. I just, I love the outdoors. I feel the peace of God. When I walk through the outdoors, I, in one of recent sermon that you did, you talked about going, walking down a path and seeing this owl and thinking about wisdom and what is, what is God trying to tell you through that owl? And I feel like that's so true that when we can just slow ourselves down, walk through creation, spend time with our doggies and just observe them, take time to observe creation around us. We can learn a lot. And I believe largely God created our creation to be something beautiful that we get to enjoy, that we get to love, and that we get to take care of. You know, we are meant to be stewards. Um, I don't think I share this in the book, but um, you know, some people might get this sense, you know, talk about God gave us dominion over the kingdom, but I see that as stewardship. He gave us a responsive right and a responsibility to steward his kingdom in the way that a person would give over the care of their child to a babysitter or a caregiver. You would hope that that person would care for your child the way you care for this child that you and your spouse created. Mm -hmm. um, and so I believe, yeah, God put these animals in our life for us to love, for us to be loved by, for he, sh he gives us love, I think, through our animals and especially dogs. We have a very special relationship with dogs. So through the book, I did some research on dogs, on the relationship between humans and dogs. And interesting, one of the things I learned is that they don't really know when dogs became domesticated. So there's a genetic change in dogs, in domesticated dogs compared to wild dogs. And I make a reference in the book that I think God created the earth and all the living things on it. And then thousands of years later, he realized man needed a best friend. And he created the domestic dog. I'm being a little bit tongue in cheek when I say that, but but I do believe there's something very special and cats and all animals. But really, I think there's something very special about about dogs and how they love us and how we get to love and care for them in return. I love that. Yeah, I think I was driving around a freeway here or, or maybe it was a side street. It must have been if I was able to read this a bumper sticker, it said something like become the person your dog thinks you are, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this idea of, of unconditional love that we receive from our dogs, that is a glimpse, a little glimpse of what God's love for us is. Our, our little dog was named Emma. We got her at Christmas for the kids 16 years ago. So Emma is short for Emmanuel, uh, which literally means in Hebrew, God with us, but we kind of joked that was dog with us, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and the way that my kids as little ones, you know, would cuddle up with their dog and find comfort in their dog. It really kind of was neat to see those muscles develop and learn how to find that comfort from God, mm -hmm. uh, find that unconditional love from him. 
for someone who's lost a pet recently, what kind of encouragement would you give them? I mean, for you and, and losing dogs as you have over the years, what's kind of helped you through that? And what could help those that, that may be grieving even now? Oh, you're going to make me get teary eyed now. <laughs> um, one, I would say, allow yourself to grieve. You know, we allow ourselves and it's socially acceptable to grieve when a parent dies or when a friend dies. Well, it's acceptable to grieve when you're, when you're, when your pets die as well. And you'll go through a grieving process and you may even want to go to grief share, you know, grief mm -hmm. share. One of the restore ministries is for people. I went through it when my father passed away. It helped me learn a lot about the grieving process, but it is a loss. And we have different levels of connection with, with our, with our animals. And I had one dog in particular that he was my dog. That was my dog. Mm -hmm. We had a very strong connection. And I'll tell you six months after he passed and I share a little bit, this is about Bo, the best dog ever in that chapter in the book. I, Shaniko and I remember we were walking down the trail and I just broke into tears and he's like, fine. I just found myself remembering all the times I spent, but we both love to run and he's wild and free and fun and sweet. And, um, just being out on the trail just made me think of him. And, and I said to Shaniko, I said, I swear when I walk into heaven, Bo's going to be the first one to come and greet me. Mm. You know, and that's, that's how we feel. You know, we don't know exactly mm. what things will be like in heaven. I do believe our dogs go to heaven. I think most, most Christians who study it will say for sure there's animals in heaven. Heaven is a depiction of the Garden of Eden. And there are animals in the Garden of Eden, and we should be able to envision that there will be animals and hear stories. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard some of John's stories that people see animals in heaven. Yeah. And I do believe our dogs will be there. Um, I did some research on this and what people say about whether or not our dogs, like they say, okay, yes, animals will be in heaven, but what our specific animals be in heaven and i believe they're, they're and i can't remember i gosh i've got i think it was randy elkhorn i'm looking at my bookshelf here and it was randy elkhorn who said why would god keep that from us mm. you know he gave us these animals to love here on earth why would he not let us have them with us when we get to heaven mm. and so yeah so i would just um to your question about how you would console someone is know that god what a blessing they were in our life how yeah. great, how many happy memories that we have with them. And mm. we have the right to grieve them when they pass. Um, but know that you will see them again. I believe that we will see them again someday and that they are happy and they're frolicking, they're playing in heaven. Mm. Yeah, I love I love what you're saying there. And it's interesting, you may have already heard this, but our founding pastor at Gateway, John Burke's book, Imagine Heaven, and his follow-up, Imagine the God of Heaven, he has said the most common question he gets from all his research of the medical journals talking about near-death experiences and of course knowing the scriptures as he does is will my dog be in heaven wow. <laughs> and that's I the did not know that. number one question he gets and he tells several stories of folks who have had these you know clinical they were clinically dead and came back and were able to tell stories of their experience and with Jesus and uh, in a couple of those stories, just as you described, their first kind of encounter with someone they loved was their dog. And one of the stories he tells was a man who was just unfortunately experienced a lot of abuse as a child and even kind of struggled with trusting God for all he experienced and even wondered, like, God, where were you when this happened? And the one place he found comfort was his pet, his dog. And so in his near death experience, that dog was the first to greet him. You know, it's just kind of this, again, wonderful reminder of God using all of creation to communicate his love to us. Well, we're going to give a couple of copies away of your book. I've just recently purchased another to give to a friend who lost the dog. But thank you for taking the time to write your story. And for those who are considering, um, learn to tell your story as God comes to you and helps you. And you might be amazed at the open doors it brings to those who you're trying to serve and reach. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie, for this book and taking the time to be with us today. Oh, thank you, Eric. You have a wonderful and blessed day.